Good morning, Liberty Lake. This is Will. I'm going to show you how to make one of the LARP weapons that we use at camp. Now, in order to do this project, you're going to need a few things. Of course, one three-quarter inch PVC pipe. This is a 10-foot length. You can find them in most hardware stores. Pipe insulation to fit. Foam pipe insulation, not rubber pipe insulation. If you use rubber, everything's going to bounce and it will hurt more. You'll need duct tape. I have silver and I have black. You can get whatever colors you want for the duct tape. Um, most places, most uh, LARPs will use silver in order for, for a blade, brown for wood. Primer, purple primer, PVC cement, pair of scissors. Sharpie marker and PVC cutter. So, start. We're going to assume and tape measure. We're going to assume that we're making a sword. I'm going to take what I have. This is just going to be a basic long sword. Just going to measure about. There we go about three and a half feet from end to end on PVC. I'm going to mark that out. That's the first thing. And this is why we use PVC cutters. Now, you could use a saw. You could use a hacksaw. You could use uh, cross cut saw in order to cut through this. It doesn't take too long, but the PVC cutter have a line Help you line And then Smatter squeezing Release squeeze release squeeze release cut now the nice part about getting a 10 foot length is that you can use this to make several other pvc weapons just the same measure how long you need and then use it but for right now we don't need the rest of this we're just going to work with this now the reason why we use pvc instead of other stuff is a uh, wood core will break pretty easily um, anything like fiberglass would be ridiculous uh, but most other things that you'd use you can't really manipulate and it's not really as flexible now what I'm measuring out here is about where I'm going to stop with foam and I'm marking out where the handle is going to be For a long sword like this, I'm marking the handle so that it starts about three feet down, ends with an inch off of here for the pommel. All right, this gives me some, this gives me a good grip. It's a nice single-handed sword. I'm able to use that, you know, pretty easily there. All right. So the next thing we're gonna do. We're gonna make sure that we have the right amount of insulation. I'm just gonna slide this on here, line with the mark that I just made. I'm gonna look up at the top. I want to make sure, and this is one of the most important parts, that I'm cutting at least a couple of inches above the end of the PVC. What this is going to do, it's gonna give me cushioning for the thrusting tip. So if I thrust into somebody's belly, I'm not hitting them with a ton of PVC. That hurts. And it's one of the most common reasons weapons are not approved for the LARP war, and mostly for the thrusting tip. So you gotta make sure to get it beyond. This is why you need the scissors. So 
So see here, that point is a little bit further down. So this way I have this hitting somebody rather than this. All right. So now that I have the right length, what I'm going to do is prime and then put cement on it so that I can anchor this stuff down. This way it doesn't move as much. With this, I usually recommend, you know, if you can, do it outside, well-ventilated area. The chemical smell on this is strong. Just gonna take the purple primer. You're gonna run it up along where your blade is going to be. This is gonna take a little bit. go down a little bit below the line it's not a bad thing because you're going to be covering everything on this with duct tape if you get this on your hands there's not much to worry about it'll come out it might take a little while, but something that's going to stay permanent. Go. Almost there. us a couple of spots it won't be that bad remember this is to help it stick on so it does not move this way the thrusting tip doesn't slowly become PVC. I'm going to take some of the rubber cement, same basic process, it's all primed, ready to go. I'm going to start coating. Purple primer thankfully dries really quickly, so if you just go in the same direction that you started with, it's not going to get too much on your brush. Don't stick all that much more. insulation open it up wrap it around now this pipe insulation also has adhesive in the middle to stick ends together to help it stay on so we're gonna actually remove those two take a little bit just to set 
Just give it a little bit of time. I'm going to push, put the trash in the PVC cutter bag for now. And the next step we're going to do, we're going to get a second layer ready to go. Most LARPs will want you to use 5 8 inch pipe insulation blade and for any parts that are going to hit. But that in New Jersey is very difficult to get. This is 3 8 inch pipe insulation. It's pretty thick, it's foam. It still does pretty good on its own, but not enough with one layer. If I hit somebody with this, it will still feel like a baseball bat. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to start taking any leftovers that I have. I'm going to wrap not long enough, okay. This is why I came with a couple. I'm going to take another full length. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to start wrapping it around this part as well. Now, I just want to get the right length first. Just going to put it up against. gonna wrap. Now this is one of the tougher parts on its own. But once you start getting tape on here, it'll stay. It'll stay quite nice. Now one of the things I try and do is not force it flush all the way around. I try and leave a little bit of air in between. I'll start to squeeze around to feel if I have any. And that just gives a little bit more cushioning. In this case, it also has the adhesives. I'm gonna remove, and I'm gonna remove. All right, now this gets about halfway around. So we're gonna need a whole nother length just to make sure. Luckily, I have a lot more insulation. This length. And I have this length. Now, I'm going to take this and wrap it around the same way. All the way up. It's going to hug around very similarly. that same little pocket that's there. This gives me double length, uh, double thickness on each one. Same thing with the adhesive strip. Gonna remove that. And now we get to a very, very common problem with a lot of this pipe insulation. This gap right here, not a good striking surface. So one of the things we're gonna do We'll take some of the extra that we got, open it up, get the length to measure out. And cut. And now we'll do the same thing that we've been doing. Remove the adhesive strips. And attach that. And this, this is the start of our blade. So, while I'm picking this stuff up, because I don't want everything to go flying across my yard or, you know, where it's not going to, where it's not going to, you know, degenerate or anything. Here, we start work, well, before we start working on the blade, there's this big pit in here. So one of the things we're going to do, real quick, I'm going to open this back up, take a little bit of duct tape, I'm going to push. 
put it over the hole. So this way, we can put in some extra cushioning for the thrusting tip. Take what I have remaining here and start ripping and breaking it up. Put in that hole. This will just give that little bit of extra padding. Like I said before, the thrusting tip's the worst part. It's tight. It's the part easiest to mess up. I'm just gonna keep putting stuff in. I got a little bit of an extension on the second layer. Sometimes that happens, sometimes that don't. So I'm just gonna start putting stuff in there too. Pop that back in. So now we got the base of the sword ready to go. Now it's just a matter of taping it over. What we're gonna start doing, we're gonna take long strips of duct tape. Start by putting it over the tip. I'm gonna pull. One of the easiest things I wanna do is I wanna make sure that this lays flat. It's gonna extend a little bit past. I'm gonna rip the end and lower it down, smooth it out. You wanna make sure that you're laying the tape flat across rather than wrapping around like a spiral. The reason why we have this padding is so that it feels soft. And when we start spiral wrapping around, a lot of people tighten up and then that just cuts all the air out. And once you cut all the air out, it stops being cushioned and therefore it starts being a rock hard weapon, not what we want. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna start laying down strip after strip. I'm gonna line it up, hold a little over the tip, pull down some more, rip. I'm gonna repeat this until the blade is covered. we're about halfway done. Now I'm trying to lay it as nice and as neatly as I can as I'm going through so that it looks good. A couple of ridges will not kill you. Alright. New more strips. And I think two more strips should about do this. All right. Now I have a little bit of an opening down here because it's not perfectly even all the way around, but thankfully that's a nice and easy fix. With enough duct tape. Unfortunately, I just ran out. What we can do 
purposes of this demonstration. Let's use some of the black. It's going to follow the same basic process. Take a strip, lay it down. It's going to lay down flat. go. This covers the blade. This right now, very bouncy, very soft. But the only other thing we need to do with the blade portion is take either scissors or a needle and poke in air holes. Now the scissors I'm not going to need too many because it's nice and wide. But with a pin, you need lots. A lot of people recommend pins because it keeps the sword still looking normal. Um, for purposes of camp, it doesn't matter to me what you use, just as long as this stays squishy up top. All right, so now we're gonna worry about the pommel. We're gonna finish up the handle and that'll take care of this weapon. Pommel's designed the same way, except you don't need as much cushioning. I'm gonna wrap it around, check. And cut off the end. Prime. Adhesive protection, wrap, set. This will hold the pollen down. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did before measure, cut, remove. Measure again, cut again, remove, wrap. Looks like we got a little extra. That's really thankful. I'm going to use this, put in here, just in case. Now. We never strike with the pommel on any LARPs, but it's always better to have that protection just in case. And also, this keeps your hand from sliding off. I don't want to hit down on it just yet because I still got to tape it up. I'm going to do the same thing that I've done. Now, the nice part is since the pommel is smaller, I, use the, I can use about the same length, you know, even a little shorter. I'm going to wrap it around like this. tape will help to anchor all the stuff that I got. Well, you know, set this little opening and we'll put it down there. All right. Now, last yet certainly not least, we have the pommel. 
We've got a handle here that's still blank, and we have the blade. All we need to do is finish the handle. So we're gonna take the black duct tape that I got here. What I like to do is I wrap around these strips. If I got a really long one that I ripped off, take it off. And wrap it around again. And there you have it. This is a basic buffer weapon. It's a long sword. Got enough padding. Got a good thrusting tip. Has a pommel to help you with the grip. And the handle's covered, so it looks like as close to a sword as we can get a bunch of PVC and foam to look like. Thank you very much for uh, taking the time to watch this. Make all the weapons you want. Have fun.